So, hello. Thanks for tuning in to Sweet Life. I am Natasha and I am on my way right now to the Force concert, which is part of the hip hop 50th anniversary celebration. Um, the headliner is LL Cool J, but also in attendance will be DJ Jazzy Jeff, Rock Kim, Salt and Pepper, um, The Roots. Join me. On my way to the venue right now. Got the little 80s ego look going. I do this hat, hat jacket, t shirt, boat chain. So, coming from New York, this is a little bit homesick this year, but especially because of the, like it being the 50th anniversary of hip hop. We've had a lot of events going on in New York, a lot of concerts and whatnot, given that that is the birthplace of hip hop. But it's cool to be able to come out to a concert here in Atlanta, you know, then kind of get to join in the celebration. Never mind that I'm not at home. But hopefully, we could change that next year. Here at State Farm Arena. I was here last, like a week and a half ago for NOSH, part of um, Atlanta Black Restaurant Week. But it's a different setup now. So I'm here for a concert. I'm not a uh, Hawks fan, so I probably won't be here to watch basketball. But the venue, see everything in the background. So you got a lot of options to get food, which is cool, because then that means that with a lot of different counters, you don't waste a lot of time waiting on your food. It's pretty much the same at all of them. Previously been to concerts, but from what I remember, it was mostly just concerts where it's like one artist performing. And so with these three concerts that I went to over the course of this weekend, it was a little bit different because it was like multiple artists performing. And so during the pre-show and then in the intermission between the artists, like while, you know, they were switching sets and whatnot, you would have a DJ on hand playing music. It was my first time experiencing this, but it was actually really cool. It ended up being like one of the highlight of the shows for all three of the shows where they would play music in between that kind of matched the vibe of the overall show. So at like the SWV and Jodeci concert, they played like, you know, R&B and soul music, a little bit of funk. At the Barris Hammond concert that I went to on the Sunday, they played like some dance halls, some rockers, a little bit of reggae. And then here at the Force concert, because it's like this hip hop concert, they played like, you know, funk music that helped to contribute to early hip hop. They played like early hip hop from like the 80s into the 90s. So it was just like a really cool vibe. It ended up getting you amped up for the show and just like I like the energy of it you know you end up hearing a lot of songs that you might not have heard in a while and then it's a completely different vibe to hear it in a venue like this where you have other people singing along versus like you know seeing a music video on your tv or the song playing in your car or something like that and so it just really helped to set the mood and to get you excited so one of the things that I've enjoyed over this year with this, you know, 50th anniversary of hip hop thing is that across different mediums, you see this kind of reaching back into the history of hip hop and going back to like the roots. Um, so the concert actually started off with like this little audio journey into the history of hip hop, explaining like about Cool Herc and some of those other early DJs, how they shaped and created the foundation of what would become hip hop, how it borrowed from funk music and borrowed from dancehall culture. And, you know, just like the, the education, these things that are often overlooked, I think as in more recent years, hip hop has become more corporate. You've kind of lost some of that street edge. And it's kind of cool to journey back into that part of the culture that I actually really love. That culture of like the 80s and the 90s where it was still pretty street. It was urban and it was about like people who didn't have a lot coming together and putting together like this very creative art form, you know, using what they had on hand to 
create like incredible music and you know the fashion and just the culture and so I really like that they wove that through the concert because it's like as part of the set like the stage setup you had like this background where they paid homage to pretty much every and any rapper that ever touched a mic you had like names just running across the the um screen at the back of the stage and it was certainly like an LL concert kind of like a throwback concert with a lot of artists from like the late 80s into the early 90s but a large part of it was just paying homage to hip-hop as a whole you know and so with that you had like representation of the different facets of hip-hop so you had like the DJ which has kind of gone away in recent years you had like the MCs the only you know you had the the MC and the hype man and whatnot as well probably some of the things that were missing might be like you know the the b-boys and the break dancers and things like that you know but it was cool to see these different elements of hip-hop come together and then it's like the roots kind of functioned as the house band so they came out first they performed a few songs but they stayed on set and performed through everyone else's set and it was actually really cool because you had the combination of the dj in the um case of dj jazzy jeff and then there was another dj as well i can't remember his name no disrespect but he was cool too so it's like you had the dj on set spinning the records cutting the records but then you had like this live band as well just added this driving energy and like i've said in some of my other videos about concerts is that having a live band makes a huge difference you notice the difference in the energy of the music on a record like a pre-recorded record or CD or whatever versus when you have a live band it just adds a whole other level of energy to the music the instruments just sound different the experience is completely different absolutely amazing so I didn't get into old-school hip-hop until I was older um, I discovered Rakim for myself when I was in college and even with Rakim like amongst those elite old school artists, which I would consider Rakim, Big Daddy Kings, Cool G Rap, that I'm still not even that familiar with his full catalog, right? Like I really just know his um, hit songs. But um, that comes about largely because I was like a twinkle in my parents' eyes when him and some of these other artists were at their high point, at like the height of their popularity and success. And for me, really, hip hop, I got into more like in the 90s, starting from like that, you know, Biggie Smalls, Tupac era, maybe even a few years before that, um, where really R&B, provided the gateway into hip-hop for me as when I was a kid growing up the adults around me were they were born in the Caribbean I was the first generation born here so it's like they weren't really listening to hip-hop I grew up with dance hall and soca music really being like the primary kind of music played in my house and around me and then in addition to that soul music I didn't get the chance to see or really to hear music from these artists as it was being released like some of these old school artists and the adults around me weren't into them either so they were artists that i found on my own when i was much older and developed my own appreciation for them it was cool to attend a concert like this where i could see someone like rock him and hear the songs that i know but then also to hear new songs that i'm less familiar with and so you know, with going to these concerts, it was cool because in hearing those songs that I was unfamiliar with, I could then go home and look them up and add them to my playlist and kind of expand my knowledge of these individual artists' catalog. So, I'm not the biggest De La Soul fan. Not that I don't like them, just that I don't really know them like that. I stuck around for like the first few minutes of their performance, but assuming that 
after their set, LL and Salt and Pepper would be up next, I decided this would be a good opportunity to go use the bathroom. And so that's what I did. I went, I used the bathroom, I took some pictures and whatnot, and then I came back in and caught like the last few songs of their performance. Please don't kick me out the hip hop family. So after De La Soul's performance, there was then an intermission where you had between the roots where they performed like some songs. Some of it was like some Atlanta hip hop, which was cool. But then you had like the DJs. And as far as hip hop goes, I love the DJs. The DJs in most groups, like those early groups, tends to be my favorite member. So it's like Spinderella was my favorite member of Salt and Pepper. I like DJ Dazzy Jeff more than I like the Fresh Prince. Jam Master J was my favorite member of Run DMC. He had the part where like the DJs took over and the second DJ, his name was DJ Drip. It was actually pretty cool. Sampling is a big thing in hip hop or it used to be, right? It's become kind of expensive now, so it's less prevalent. But in the early years of hip hop, sampling was a really big thing. And so there was this part of the intermission where they would play a piece from the original record and the DJ would scratch and mix it and it would then segue into the song that sampled it. And so it was actually really dope because you would hear a stretch of the original song and it wouldn't be, unless like you know what's coming, it wouldn't be immediately clear what the sampled piece was. But then it's like the DJ would scratch just that one part of the record and would then use that to segue into the hip hop song that sampled it. And it actually ended up being really, really dope. So LL performed after the intermission. He came out, he was on stage for a good minute. And then it seemed like he was winding down his set. And I started stressing because I was like, wait a minute, what happened to Salt and Pepper? And I'm thinking like maybe something happened and they not performing anymore. I was stressed, stressed. And I'm like trying to let myself down to not be so disappointed. But then, but then, Black Thought started the introduction for Salt and Pepper. And I was so excited when they came out on stage like everybody else was cool LL did his thing Rakim did his thing but Salt and Pepper just like kicked this concert into overdrive for me along with LL Salt and Pepper was one of the performers well and um the roots they were like the performers that I had some personal familiarity with during the high point of their careers. So with Salt and Pepper, they were still pretty big into the early 90s. And so I was a kid during that time, like a pretty young kid, but yet still old enough to be aware of them, to see like their music videos and to know who they were in that moment, like as these songs were being released. So I was a kid when like What A Man and those other songs came out, you know, so to be there at this concert, to see them perform it live was incredible. The only thing that could have made it even better was that if they performed it with like En Vogue, which I know is very unlikely. And so, you know, I remember the song Let's Talk About Sex when it came out. I know like there were a few videos in the early 90s that would premiere on Fox. I don't know what the station would be in other um, cities, but quite often on a Sunday, like after The Simpsons, you would have like these world premieres of very big videos. And I remember Let's Talk About Sex being one of them. And it's like another time it was like Michael Jackson. So this was like a really big deal. and. Seeing all of these Salt and Pepper hits, it helps you realize, or it reminded me of just how big they were. You know, like seeing these videos was incredible. And then they just shut the show down with my all-time favorite, which I'm sure is a lot of other people's all-time favorite song, 
push it. Even now, just to hear the beginning of that song, it's like, can't help but to want to dance. Like I was recording, but you could see like the videos all over the place because I was more interested in dancing. And it is the song that, not to say I don't like the other songs, but that was the song that I most definitely wanted to see them perform. It's like there's certain artists where I like them, I've been to their shows, they don't perform the song that I like, and you know, it's not the end of the world. But if I had gone to this Salt and Pepper show, or if I'd seen Salt and Pepper perform, and they didn't perform Push It, more than any other song, I would have been disappointed. And so it's like, to get to see them perform it, was absolutely incredible because you know i wasn't going to concerts when i was a little kid so it's like to see it as an adult now it's like my inner child was so excited definitely dope i loved that they had dancers and then the man of the hour came out mr ll cool j and when you think about it for a tour like this which is intended to celebrate 50 years of hip-hop, there's really just a handful of artists that could headline such a show. Where, when you think about it, they were out and relevant in the 80s and managed to maintain their relevance to maintain their relevance for decades. Right. When you think about it, Elo was like a teenager back in the 80s when he first came out. Was active then, like was in, um, what is it, Crush Groove? And was then active in the 90s. I would even argue to say, I was going to say that like the artist, the 90s was his decade, but when you think about it, he was a big deal in the 80s. He just happened to still be a big deal in the 90s, right? And even into the 2000s, he still had hit songs. I think that's like with the um, I'm Gonna Love You Better song and album, that was like I think his first number one or something like that. And at that point, I think he was like 10 albums deep. And still putting out hit records and when you think about it concerts like this really make you appreciate artists because when they're releasing albums it's like you're there in the moment the album comes out they have a hit single or whatever it is it comes out it's hot for a moment and then it dies down maybe they might come out with something else but it's like when you go to these concerts and you see these artists perform just hit after hit after hit that you remember from different parts and points in your life it's incredible now i'm going to take a special break and point out that around the way girl is probably my favorite ll cool j song i think it's just incredible like I went to the show, that's the song I was listening for. He can pick and choose whatever else he did or didn't want to perform. I Need a Round the Way Girl had to be performed, otherwise I was going to be disappointed at the show. That is like my jam. It's like... It is like... Push It with Salt and Pepper for me. That is like the song that... I want to hear from them and to be there and to hear it live was really dope the only thing was that like they performed it with a slightly different mix and that's like a song I don't want any remix don't mess around with the arrangement just play it straight through I want to hear you know with that um Mary Jane girl sample pumping with the bass line don't play with it don't don't touch it don't adulterate it don't do anything play it straight through and so, like I was saying, it's actually really amazing to see these artists and to see them perform songs from different parts of their career. And I think they made a really good choice in LL being like the headliner for this tour because certainly the other artists, not to take anything away from them, but when you think about it, LL has had like one of the longest consistently successful careers in hip-hop 
And honestly, there was a point in time where it seemed like when rappers reached a certain age, it was just like off to the retirement home with you. But I think some artists have staying power just because they're able to adapt with the times. Like you think about it, LL was active around the time Run DMC and them were active in the 80s, like when they were hot. LL was hot in the 90s when like, you know, you had Tupac and Biggie, like even in the early 90s, like with I'm gonna knock you out and stuff like that. And then later on in the 90s with, you know, songs that were hot around the time that Biggie and Pac and all that kind of stuff was going on. Not many artists survived during those two different eras were able to make that transition. And it's incredible. To my understanding, the main lineup for the tour remained the same on each date, but they would bring out certain artists on certain dates. So Hometown Hero in Atlanta would be ludicrous. He came out, he performed some of his biggest songs, and it's like exciting for the crowd if you're from Atlanta, whether you were born and raised here or a transplant, to hear like your local homegrown music, right? Like your local homegrown artists come out on stage at a show like this and perform. Like it gets you amped up, you know? And it was a nice addition. I really enjoyed this show where it mixed different artists and it all worked together. But then also artists from like different eras, you know, you had quite a number of New York artists, but then you had Luda, you know, and there's like some ripping and rapping, or at least there used to be, but it's nice to see all of this come together. And you had much of the same on other stops on the tour where they would bring in local artists, really dope. But when he came back out, he kind of started off with a slower set, some songs for the ladies. and from there actually launch back into some of like his more like regular hip-hop type songs but when you think about it i think that's part of why LL career has lasted so long is that he's just an incredibly versatile artist he has songs like hard-hitting songs for like the guys battle raps and whatnot but he also has like smooth songs for the ladies and I think that speaks to his talent and his adaptability, his ability to kind of change and adapt to the times, to the current and whatnot, to remain relevant is part of why his career has lasted so long. You know, he's, I think, an absolute legend within hip hop and really unmatched by very few artists. I can't think of many others that could hold a candle to him when you think about it. And to see him live, it gave me like a greater appreciation. I ended up having to leave the show early because I had to work the next day. But when I left, like he was still rocking. Leave the arena, he was performing on Mama Said Knock You Out, which was another song that I wanted to see. Absolutely incredible. If you ever get the chance to see any of these artists, I would certainly recommend it. Thanks for tuning in. To ensure you don't miss any episodes, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, go ahead and click that thumbs up button if you like what you saw, and go ahead and share it on social media.